Hi, my name is Ayman Aitani. I'm a business growth specialist. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about how to acquire customers, customer acquisition tactics. And I also want to thank uh, Baroness Raisa for joining us. Dr. Karim, uh, uh, congratulations on your recent win. Assalamu alaikum, Yahya. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen through the presentation. And if you guys are active on Zoom, uh, make sure that you use these new features that they have where if I'm sharing a presentation, uh, I can share it with uh, with a picture-in-picture. Picture. So you have me here, right? So um, so if you are, uh, if you do presentations uh, at work, or uh, so you can you, you can do small things like this uh, in the recent updates to, to Zoom. All right. So uh, let's address. Okay, so white shirt and white background was not the right choice of wardrobe. So if you're familiar with the uh, functionality of Zoom, so anytime you want to ask a question, go ahead and ask it in the chat or on the FAQ. Um, we're going to be together for around 30 minutes. I'm trying to keep the sessions short, being mindful of everybody's time. And anything you want to ask me on uh, about business growth or aspects of problems in your business, about your raises, uh, how to hire, how to do things, and so on, whatever problems that you have in your business, I'm happy to answer that. One of the key concepts today is brand awareness versus direct response. The reason I open up with this is a lot of people like to mix the two, and they don't mix easily. So brand awareness is when you talk about you and your business and what you stand for and what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to solve. It's, it's the brand aspect, and I'll cover that in a little bit more, more detail. Direct response is when you go in for the action, download my app, sign up, join me, sign up, do this, register for the webinar. So the webinar thing here is, is, a, is, a, is a direct response. So it's a direct ask. You're going in for the sale. Brand awareness is more of uh, things that, that we're doing now. So this, this web, so the webinar here, we're talking about uh, things that we can do together, talking about uh, information about areas where I can help in. So the brand, what do you stand for? What can you help with? What can you do? What are others who are using your platform? So um, if I want to talk about, let's say, let's say uh, uh, Baroness Raisa, when we're talking about you do some consulting and advising, right, for your customers, you can talk more about if you want to get a testimony from your customer to share, like getting them to share uh, uh, about their own business and how you help them and so on, that falls under brand awareness. You're not saying come to me for, uh, uh, for consulting, you are indirectly, but you're not, it's not a direct call to action. Um, Karim, in your case, a brand awareness, I would focus in your case on, uh, because your tech is very focused on R&D and your own IP and patents and things like this, and also your backgrounds as founders, I would talk more about that. I know it's uncomfortable uh, a little bit, but in your particular case, because you're building a, a, a very technology-based product that is relatively advanced, so I would, talk more about what qualifies you to do this and uh, how others are, because you have like eight different use cases, um, common use cases. I will talk more about how that helps others in different uh, cases and so on. So those are examples of, of, uh, of brand awareness. Uh, the direct response would be sign up, join, pay, subscribe, download, and, and so on. Um, so we're talking B2C now, and I know some of you are B2B, so I'll be talking about B2B in, in the second part. So one aspect in the B2C that I don't see enough people using is ads that lead you to WhatsApp. So uh, WhatsApp is available, in, in, especially in the UAE, in Saudi Arabia, and the Middle East, and the you know, countries that, 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 that you're working in. So there, it's, it's, everybody has it. And you can run ads on Instagram and Facebook. The call to action is uh, is send a message so click to it's click to whatsapp so it's an ad that says click to whatsapp and then you won't be confused you'll see here that the uh you'd see here i don't know how this works here all right so you see here that that that, that the ad so the ad is what they send you so this way you won't be confused what message and where they're coming from and why they're getting in touch with you so it basically says that you know i saw your ad it's, you know tell me more and a lot of this is, has to do with people when they look to buy, they want to talk more with a person, especially if they don't know who you are or your brand. Uh, so that's this WhatsApp, click to WhatsApp is definitely, definitely a big aspect that I would recommend uh, you use uh, because it's not very expensive relative to others. Uh, you will get some junk, 
uh, and uh, some misunderstandings here and there, but uh, that's the nature of the internet and leads. You can also do the same with messenger ads so for those who are, uh, if you want to target users who are on Facebook specifically via messenger, I personally prefer WhatsApp because it gives you a wider audience, uh, even if they're not very active on Facebook or not comfortable talking to a business on Facebook, they will talk to you on WhatsApp. There are no issues there. Um, one aspect of social media accounts, and again, this is for B2C, is a sales-ready bio. So the bio of what, is it, what it is that you do, um, uh, which reminds me, Rita, you're with me here on the call. Please remind me, I need to, to update my TikTok, uh, 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 my TikTok bio from English to Arabic. Uh, I, I, it's been on my list for weeks and I forgot. All right, so, so, so this is an example, guys, of the bio, of the bio, what the bio says, all right? So, so uh, I've been trying to be more active on, on TikTok and my bio is about business growth and, th and, and things like this, but I've been trying to push more Arabic content on, on, on TikTok. Uh, I've been trying to find an outlet uh, uh, for, for my Arabic, uh, uh, for trying to talk business in Arabic. So I'm doing this on TikTok and in my podcast. Um, so the bio plays a role. So I'm going to give you an example of a bio for B2C, which is for, because uh, uh, it's a B2C bio. This is for shopping, right? Uh, uh, and, and I see Yahya as well. Uh, Yahya uh, is a fit Latina tafasil actor. If you could give us some more information in the chat about your business, I'll be able to give some examples from what we're seeing together. Um, so, for example, this example here is about a bio. So, and it's a bio, and this fits in the tight structure, right? So, it, it might look long, but it's not. So, this is an example of a store. So, if it's a store who wants to sell online, this this type of detail here is what they would need. This is something uh, I prepared based after studying more than 50, 60 stores online and what they're selling. So, some things that I found distinctive is the flag. If you notice the flag, so people know that actually this is local and I can get it quickly versus it's some random account on the internet that I need to trust from abroad. So, I'm saying, uh, you know, the, the flag, I'm saying I'm an online store. If I don't have a store, physical store. With personal shopping assistance, that brings me back to the WhatsApp part where you could, you know, you can ask me, ask somebody, do you have this in blue? Do you deliver to, to this area in the city and, uh, uh, and so on? Next day delivery, so the delivery speed, you know how we want this, we want this, we want this now, we want this today. If there's same day delivery, I'll, I'll take it. So having an, an emoji, so a lot of use of emoji definitely makes it easier for you to use. Uh, show that you have pay online or cash on delivery. I prefer you hide the cash on delivery or remove that. If you try to push pay online, there's, uh, you, you, there's definitely an area for you to do this. And I'd recommend the, the app Zboni for that. It would definitely help you with collecting your money. That's Z-B-O-O-N-I. I'm an advisor to that business. Um, the exchange policy and the refunds, those are very important for people to buy from you. So before they buy from you, uh, they need to know that Tayyib, if I don't like it, or if it's not the right size or so on, how, what's, what's the exchange policy uh, on this? So you'd say three days exchange policy, uh, refunds, uh, store credit. So I'm not gonna give you back any cash. I'm happy to refund it, but it's gonna be credit. You're gonna have to buy uh, order here, at, uh, and, uh, you know, or, or, or please DM and ask for more pictures before buying and free shipping for the UE for orders above a certain number. So that's the way you're free to do it. And then the, uh, the WhatsApp URL, uh, Rita, if you can also share it in the chat, you can try this on any bio, right? It's not just Instagram. You can try it anywhere on your social network, even personally. Uh, what I like about this, there's this one and there's also another one, which is wp.me slash, there's also another one, Rita, if you have a minute, find what the other one is. So what I like about this is something that really annoys me in WhatsApp personally, you see this from people when they deliver. They call me and they say, send me the share locations. Like, look, send, you send me a message and I'll respond to it. The reason I ask them to do this is, uh, it just annoys me when I wanna, on WhatsApp, I need to go, I need to add a number to my contacts. I have to wait until WhatsApp picks it up and then I have to message you. So there's a lot of friction for me to do so. It's not friction, it's just, you know, it's friction. I want it faster, I want it now. So with this link, when I click when I click on it, it leaves Instagram. It opens up WhatsApp with the numbers filled in automatically. I don't have to do anything as an as a consumer. So I click on this and I can message you. So uh, uh, Rita, include in the, in the URL the this URL, the phone number, and then another one. You, you can also add my number so people can can WhatsApp me now. They can see how it works. Um, and yes, and, and this would go here. Uh, this would go here, and it, uh, this WhatsApp link you, you can put it in your bio. Uh, as a, a, a the link for that. One aspect or also from a B2C perspective is the Facebook business manager. It's the home, it's the hub for everything Facebook for you. You put your, the people who have access to your accounts, you control them and manage them here. 
your Facebook pages, your uh, your ad accounts, your payment methods, your tracking pixels, your if you have an app, your software development, your SDK, all of this goes here. Uh, the Facebook Business Manager is important for B2C. I've had many cases of business owners who had reliant on, on one employee who left and then they have to chase that employee to get back admin access and so on. If you have a business manager, uh, that's a small example of something that you can easily fix. Running ads all the time. That's again a B2C approach. I'll talk more about B2B. But for the B2C, definitely, definitely, it's a reality. You have to run ads all the time, every day, every day, every day. And it depends on your budget and what you're trying to sell and so on. It, but it cannot be 2,000 dirhams a month. It cannot. It's too low. Uh, it, there's little for you to do. There's little for you to do to, to drive real results and big results for, for what you want to do. So six to 10,000 dirhams is a, is, a, is a way to start. Um, and then if you are a direct-to-consumer part, you can also do some setup. With the Facebook, with the, I mentioned this in a few slides back with the business manager, you can look at the tracking pixel and so on. If you do it properly, you can know that I'm spending 6,000 dirhams, but I'm selling 8,000 dirhams worth of items so that you know that this is, this is, this is net, net positive for you or not. So uh, uh, if you set it up properly this way, you'll be able to, to look at this is how much. So within the Facebook ads, you, you can know that I'm spending uh, 80 dirhams to acquire a customer and I'm selling items worth of 200 dirhams. So you, you get to see that this is more or less not, not, not positive for you. Uh, posting organically won't get you anywhere. You're going to have to promote uh, uh, anything, uh, everything, uh, everything. You have to promote everything. You can't not promote everything. And then you can, you can choose to target people and where they are and how they're doing and, and where you want to get them. Uh, yes, LinkedIn and TikTok. Now, the only thing that's organically working now is LinkedIn and TikTok. So if you put, so LinkedIn and TikTok are trying to attract more and more people to it. So they're attracting content, uh, people who create content. So what they do is, if you post something on the internet on LinkedIn or TikTok, they will get it. To, they will, you know, spread it out for people to see it, without you paying ads. On Instagram and Facebook, people won't see it that much. Uh, Facebook started out like this, if you remember back in two thousand and eight, nine, when they created Facebook pages. When pages, when brands used to post something, people used to see it. But with time, when it became competitive, they reduced the organic reach and now you have to pay for reach. LinkedIn and TikTok are going through that. It's a natural progression of, of, a, uh, of a social network. So if you want to be active on, if you, on LinkedIn, if you're not comfortable with TikTok, now is a good time to do so in terms of the organic reach. Um, and there are also a lot of tools that you can use on your mobile, right? From Facebook, their Pages Manager is a very good tool. Their Ad Account is a very good tool. Um, so that's B2C. I'm going to talk B2B, right? So B2B is when we, I want to go after businesses. So other business owners, other big businesses, government entities, the, the B2B part. It's, digi it's not digital. It, so I know a lot of us want to run ads and get the business to come to us as B2B. It's not digital. If you really want to land, you will get digital referrals from digital but uh, by ads, but it's not, they're not the big customers that you're trying to go after. So you cannot stay home behind ads and trying to grow your B2B business. It has to be old school, pre-internet things as in, uh, Hello, uh, Yahya. Who do I know in uh, Who do you know in in this in this company? I'm trying to reach them. They might be a potential customer for me. You introduce me to them, and then I speak with them. And then your friend is not a decision maker, but he introduces me to the decision maker, uh, and then I go through that. And you reach, you participate in events, your cold outreach or warm outreach or referrals. I mean, that's a, it's old school B two B type of work. So it's not digital, unfortunately. Um, events, you know, we used to have events physically before. Now we have the digital version of them. So last week there was STEP. So STEP is one of the large entrepreneurship conferences in the Middle East. They hosted that last week. Um, I, was a, I was a mentor for startups there and it was all digital, right? So um, I used to attend this conference in, in, in physical part. I used to spend a couple of days there just to meet and see and catch up with many people in the industry. Um, the digital equivalent, is getting there it's difficult i mean COVID has has messed has messed everyone up um, and what happens is i'll you know the digital part it's the closest that you can get so they had like a networking thing where you can join 
a random uh, networking event where they throw you into a room and you have three minutes to meet the person in front of you and then they throw somebody else in. So that's a, that's a quick networking way to do so. Uh, that's a, like a speed dating sort of thing. And there's a lot, also a lot of discussions in the chat. So if there's something in the chat that you like or somebody that you like in the chat, uh, you'd be able to uh, discuss with them and, and reach out to them and so on. So in the digital events, I know it's not the same as offline events, any event, uh, digital is not the same, but still it's better than hiding behind an ad for B2B. Another aspect of this is, 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 is the newsletter. Um, if, you, if, you, if you've been keeping track of my content for a while, I've been trying to do more with the newsletters to keep in touch with people. So if you're looking for more things that I can do better with the newsletter, let me know uh, uh, in the chat here or, uh, or, or by DM on Instagram. So the newsletters are a way, it's not, they're not the way, but they're one of the ways to share more information. So what I send, for example, in the, um, in the newsletters are like lengthy information. So let's say you missed this webinar or you want more details about this webinar or so on, I send like a summary by email versus uh, going through half, half an hour of this. So it depends on how you consume better. And word of mouth is reputation basically, right? So uh, I remember early on in the business, I was struggling with a couple of things, right? So one of, one of the customers I had, they were asking for much more than the budget. So the scope of work I wrote was not very clear, right? So this is B2B work. The scope of work I wrote was not crystal clear, okay? That's on me. And the other party, they wanted to take advantage of that, right? So partially it was misunderstanding, partially they wanted to take advantage of that and so on. So. We reached a stage where the, the project was a losing project because we were doing more than we could. And I was having a discussion about this uh, with my dad. And we were talking about this and so on. And I was telling him, look, I, you know, I, I wanted to cut corners so that we could you know, save some money and at least have the project be not such a, a lost driver. He was very clear. And the message he sent me was clear and I've been applying it since. He says, look, your reputation. You committed to do something, you proceed to do something, even if it's even if it leads to a loss, even if it leads to money from your own pocket, it's a lesson learned for you, but you commit because this is, this is your reputation. This is the way you do work and people talk. And uh, so, and for me, that's something I've kept in mind. That was years, years ago. And I continue to do this now is whenever I see, uh, you know, if you want to do something a little bit differently to make it a little bit more profitable, how does it affect the actual output? Are we cutting too much corners? What's going on here and so on? So that aspect uh, is important when, when looking at, at word of mouth. So there are, some, there are some lead generation that you can do on B2B, but you know, assume it will be at most 30% of your business, right? So the other 70%, you're gonna have to go out, uh, you know, old school B2B customer acquisition by calls and referrals and things like this, but you can do some digital ads. Um, so with this, uh, we're looking at, you can, you can get people to call your business or they can fill in leads. Uh, so the lead ads are effective on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and Google. Um, Facebook ha has some tools for booking if, you, if they want to book an appointment with you. Um, I think also an aspect, especially now during COVID, I know a lot of the B2B folks on the call want to go out and get new customers, but I think one of the bigger tactics that we need to do is, is now when I talk to, 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 to founders, I talk about survival, right? So it's a badge that I survived COVID, right? So this is what you're working on as a founder, not growth and not exponential and not any of that. The badge you're trying to earn is surviving COVID. So that badge uh, is, to, you know, either you get more customers or you retain existing customers. I'd focus more on retaining existing customers, doing more with them, doing more with the existing customers, even if it's out of pocket, let them stay with you, let them continue to, 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 to pay you your retainer or your month or, or your project or renewing with you uh, because you need to keep existing customers to maintain where you are to survive while you go out to find other customers because it's, it's tough now for all of the businesses due to COVID. Things are getting better. I'm very hopeful about October and November from what I'm seeing so far, uh, but you know it's, it's about survival. So I would focus a lot on uh, on the uh, maintaining the, the existing customers. And so I'm trying to keep it short uh, to, to, for the value of time for everybody uh, who's participating. So I'm open to any questions you might have. 
uh, you could talk to me on the on DM on Instagram, or we can talk here if you wanna if you wanna ask uh, ask a question publicly comfortably. I'm happy to do that, or I'm happy to answer your questions on 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 on, on Instagram uh, uh, later. Next week we're talking about common mistakes for early stage founders. We're talking about branding mistakes and uh, choice of team and a few other things as well. So if you have any questions, now is a good time. If not, I'm happy to talk to you later on on Instagram or by email in the email that I'm sending out. How are you today, Raksha? You're doing good? Yes, very good. Thank you for asking. You're in B2B, right? Yes. What of this um, can you do better? I have one question. Yes, go ahead. Okay. So I want to work with the gaming company. In A sailing company? Gaming. Gaming, gaming company. So electronic yes. gaming. Yes, I want to bring the competition in Middle East. All right. Okay, so I have some plans already, but I don't know how to reach out to them. All right. Um, what type of service would you give them? Pardon? Uh, service, okay. Um, I work with uh, 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 eSports tournament company in, based in Dubai. Uh, yes, but but what 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 are you trying to offer them? You're trying to offer them an audience. You're trying to offer them yeah. sponsorship. Where you are, I will yeah. offer, I will offer them uh, esports tournament in the Middle East as well as the uh, digital digital marketing. Okay, all right. Now, uh, before you reach out to them, you're going to work on the value proposition. I'm going to point out a few things mm -hmm. specific to gaming that when you reach out to them, just make sure that those are covered. Okay. Because these types of games are electronic, so there's no physical presence needed in the, in the UAE, right? So before COVID, you might have had like a, physic, a, a hybrid physical and online event. Due to COVID now and travel restrictions and so on, uh, it's gonna be only all online event. So, uh, that, uh, so for them, they, they say we can host it and, and we already have a community that comes to us from the Middle East and we can run a few ads to target them. What are you gonna give us more? So that's the, so the email or whatever outreach to them, it won't be uh, saying that, you know, I wanna help you host it here. So it has to be a little bit, so just keep this in mind that they have things that they can do because it's fully online and, uh, and they, can, uh, they can attract those customers. So you have to differentiate of how you're able to do this uh, uh, yourself. This is one. Mm -hmm. Second, I would go into the game itself, right? So I would use uh, I don't know if you're a gamer or not. I used to play games when I was much younger, and now I'm doing this with my kids, and I'm looking at, you know, we're idiots for granted. <laughs> but uh, uh, so there's a certain uh, uh, lingo that they care about. Uh, so I don't know what type of gaming game, gaming network you're trying to attract and so on. So I would spend time to understand their content, their type of lingo, their type of characters, that aspect of it and so on. And I would introduce that in the in the discussion, in the discussion with them, in your, in your opening lines and so on. So you'd have, mm -hmm. you'd have that as an opening aspect. That's definitely an opening aspect there. Third, they're going to ask you about other events that you've hosted and so on. So I don't know if you have that or if you have an affiliate who can help you do that. So that, that, that topic might come up. So I want you to be ready to address that. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to talk you, ask you about sponsorship. They're going to try to ask you about what type, because at the end, you know, they're going to do this to generate revenue. So they're going to ask you what type of sponsorship can you get? Uh, so that's something that either you show them what you've done in the past, or you can say, I can reach out, you know, I have contacts in those areas that are of interest and so on. And the fifth part, um, and I think that's important for your pitch, and also that might help you uh, reach out to them, is if you could identify local gamers who are not influential, but just relatively important so let's say there are a hundred gamers a hundred top gamers so let's look at the top top hundred gamers in the uae or saudi arabia because those are those are those are key countries when, when, when in discussions that i've been part of where uh, you know people want to get online uh, you know electronic gaming to, to, to the region um try to reach people who are in the num not the top 10 top seven, so number 75, number 82, number 83. The reason reaching out to those is they are more likely to respond to your message on Instagram or email or LinkedIn or whatever you wanna reach out to them, uh, how you're gonna reach out to them on Twitch or whatever it is. So when you reach out to him or her, you'd ask them for, you know, 
you could, if you could reach out to them, they are more likely to respond than a big company. This is one. Two, depending on how you want to talk and knowing you and your character from, from, from our different interactions online, you have that character trait so you can get a little bit close to that gamer. And then usually those, the gaming community is very close. So they know each other. So that guy might know somebody who works there or his friend, his or her friend might know somebody who works there and so on. That might be your end. So that person can help you formulate your offering and they can be with you. You, you might be able to, to, to pay them later on, right? So you don't have to pay them now, but you'd say, look, I'm trying to build this concept. If you can help me develop it further, I'm trying to pitch it to them. And this way he or she will be part of the team that will help you bring it here and so on. So that could be uh, an angle where you help, you help them and they help you sort of thing. Because they're gamers, right? So they won't go into what you're going to do is, is advising them how to get customers, building their community here, uh, sponsorship and so on. The gamer won't do that. You would. So those are five different angles that, uh, that, that, that I, would, uh, I would look at before, and formulate it before I reach out to, before I reach out to them. Okay. Does this make sense? Thank you so much. I, ho I hope this helps or, or it was clear. Hi, Ayman, how are you? Yeah. Thank you so much for this awesome webinar. I really enjoyed it. I know you're more into B2B, but you know you won't get company. But you know, so so that's why I hope the B two B part was uh, was a, was a bit helpful. And I would focus in your case on the brand part, right? So your your aspect of the tech and aspect of it, definitely the brand awareness part is a big part of of, of what you need to be doing. Understood. That's super helpful. I actually had another question as well. Like aside from uh, aside from that, I have another business on the side, like another okay. business which is a software development company, and uh, okay. which we we build like mobile apps, uh, websites, AI solutions. So when approaching B two B clients, I think AI would require a bit of a more unique approach because uh, you would have to kind of like I'm guessing, like I'm assuming you would have to educate people here in the market a bit more about AI. But for mobile apps and websites, with Facebook ads, we're kind of getting lower quality leads even with lookalike audiences, it's like we're, get, we're getting leads, but they're a bit less serious. Uh, where Google ads, they're more later down in the funnel, the, 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 the requests that we're getting, but it's really competitive uh, bidding on those keywords. Uh, so I'm looking at like LinkedIn, uh, putting out organic content because LinkedIn is a bit uh, more expensive than Facebook and uh, Google ads. So, and it's harder to meet people in conferences nowadays. And you were talking about a bit of more old school approaches. Uh, so I'm just curious if you have any, 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 any thoughts on that, on, on ways we can approach B2B clients, um, uh, like maybe old school approaches or, uh, or I don't know if, if we're doing it the right way, if you think there's a different way. I'm just curious if you have any comments on that. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, I, would, I would recommend, uh, let's, let's, let's talk more too about this, Karim, right? So this, uh, this, this software development, are you developing your own apps or are you doing custom development for the enterprises and companies that you meet? Custom develop uh, custom development for for enterprises and uh, and new businesses and existing businesses. Okay, all right, all right. And the ads that you mentioned on Google and Facebook and so on, those are the message is let us build your mobile app. Yes, yes. It's uh, yeah. It's we build mobile apps. We build websites. You click. You can go to the website and there this is tracked through pixels and then when they request a quote, that's also tracked and we we get the the email and then we follow up from there. Is your differentiator is your differentiator the AI bit? That's one of them. That's one one differentiator. Uh, and really, there's very little supply of AI in this, especially in deep learning in in the MENA region. Uh, the difficult part of it, we're not running ads for AI yet because I don't think that people understand the use cases of AI well. Uh, but maybe I'm mistaken about that uh, in terms of running the ads. Tell me more about the differentiator, please, Karim. So it's AI. What else? Because yeah. some other firms are many, yeah. locally, regionally, globally, yes. so there are many. And all they want to sell in the UAE and Saudi Arabia and so on. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely, I agree with you. So one differentiator is the AI. Another one is that we're, we're, we do really well with design. Uh, like we've, like the, some of the team members have more than 12, 13 years experience in design. So uh, like the products that we put out uh, look really good. Uh, and also like we deliver on time. And I, and I understand like maybe a lot of companies say that, but we deliver on time. Uh, we give uh, much better prices than the market, especially because uh, it's we're new in the Dubai market and uh, the AI aspect. But the AI aspect, we haven't been able to capitalize on the differentiation there yet. Okay, what I would what I would look at, Karim, instead, yes. of, in, instead of coming in as a software development shop, there's a discussion here something development shop. Okay, 
Uh, yeah. If you bring it like this, it's going to be, uh, the discussion is going to be very clear. There are so many of you. What's your hourly rate? What have you done for others? So it becomes a very commoditized aspect. Yeah. What I would come in as an angle saying, um, you guys are in retail, so you're approaching a retailer or an insurance company or a financial company and so on. Yes. These are the common, so you're coming in to solve a business problem using AI. So you're coming in with the AI business problem solving. The app is a byproduct of how you've solved it. So you're coming in as an AI advisor with a technical capability to execute the apps and some of the backend integrations that they might need. So I would come in with that angle. What happens here is one, you've you, you, you differentiated yourself very clearly from the shops, right? So you're not coming yeah. as a thing. Uh, and, and also uh, your pitch would be, uh, it could be as blunt as we're not a mobile, we're not a mobile app shop or, or whatever you want to call it, right? We are an AI advisory or, 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 or some, something, some, something AI advisory with technical execution capability, you know, something, you know, uh, something along those lines. So that would be your clear, clarity part where you, you differentiate with that. And then uh, when you look at, uh, What's the typical customer that you approach? Is it finance? What's a good customer for you? Finance. They're the ones, the ones that you mentioned: retail, uh, restaurants, uh, sure. HR. Uh, about retail, okay, that's about retail. Retail is suffering now due to they've invested so much in long-term rent contracts and stocks and so on, and physical stock of products, and then we're unable to to shop physically the way we used to before. So um, they're looking for ups upselling uh, to existing customers. Uh, they're looking for better budget of their inventory. They're looking for a bunch of things to save costs. So they're willing to pay you if you can show them how you can save costs and so on. So your end will be to the retailer saying, look, I'm coming in. I'm going to use your existing data. You're sitting on a, so you're going to say, retailer, look, you're looking to save costs, better manage inventory and so on. You're sitting on a ton of data and you're unable to expand a little bit more in what you want to do. Therefore, we're going to come in using this, your existing data, your existing touch points, your existing whatever and then we're going to analyze your data to provide you with one two three and four and we can do this over a three to six month time frame and it costs you, know, you don't cost now you say you know we uh, and ai is a big aspect and we can do some of the execution so that could be uh, uh, so that is the angle i would come into you can do this on linkedin uh, by linkedin cold outreach you can do this by uh, by introduction, so I would know somebody, I'd refer you to that guy or girl and so on. So that's like now having discussions saying, look, we do, re we do this, would you know retail and so on. So I would do that. And when you message them, come in very clearly. I'm using AI to do this. So don't do like the shops, they come in. I got those in my inbox, right? Uh, they, a long list of, we're a shop that does this development. Yeah. This. So it's like, okay, okay, fine, fine, you know. You know. Yeah, I see uh, those. I, yeah. So there's, there's two paragraphs that says, look, you know, we're AI specialist technology providers. And we, we can really help retail in, in this part in moving inventory, doing this, identifying customers who can upsell and so on. And we'd like to have a, a, a open having a discussion. And we've done this for this and this customer. Uh, 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 we'd, like, we'd like to have a discussion. If you have a white paper, great, include that there. The same, we'd like to have a discussion. So that would be an opening part from a B2B perspective, not, not the, not the, not, not the, not the uh, development shop. Understood. That's actually super helpful, and it, it's a great way to differentiate ourselves from others in the market and to communicate the value proposition better. Definitely, uh, yeah. Well, it's great, great great. And, and, and oh, yeah. you a little bit more and so on if you, if you want to follow up. You want us to follow up on a few things, uh, answer a few questions. For sure. I'm ready, I'm ready to move on, so. Thank you guys for attending and participating. Thank you definitely for your questions. It's very solid questions. You got electronic gaming, which is which is not very common. You have AI to solve business problems. That's also not very common. Uh, thank you for those questions uh, and thank you for participating and uh, I'll hopefully see you guys soon.